After a nice quiet stretch across the Atlantic, there are signs that it is starting to wake up just a little bit. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. In this video, we're going to talk about two new waves that have been highlighted by the National Hurricane Center. That's just part of the story. There's also a non-highlighted wave because it hasn't really developed just yet. But there's a sneaky shot that something could get into the golf towards the end of this week, really by the weekend. So we're going to break that down. Speaking of breaking things down, we're going to take a look at some of the models and the ensemble forecast. If you don't know what an ensemble forecast is, stick around towards the end of the video. Some good stuff coming away to kind of tell the story of the Atlantic over the next 7 to 10 days. Before we get into the the meat and potatoes of this video if you do want to stay updated on all things weather especially as we are venturing through hurricane season you have to hit subscribe please do so and if you happen to find this video helpful or informative please hit that thumbs up button it really does help us out a lot post in the comments below as well where you're tuning in from all right so here is the new information hot off the press it's been a while since i've showed you this map because there just hasn't been much going on thankfully across the tropical atlantic but here we go again hurricane center highlighting two areas now we have a wave right about here let me bring out my arrow for you that's expected to have the potential to develop once it gets in this region of the Central Atlantic. I'm going to give each one of these some in-depth analysis. Then we have another wave. You see the development zone here in yellow. That one has a 30% shot to develop over the next few days. This wave is actually still over Africa. Again, I'm going to show you a closer look at both of these in just one second. So those are the two areas that the Hurricane Center are currently watching. The first wave now is southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. And you see it right here. There's a little bit of turn to it but it's also elongated right now it's kind of in the intertropical convergence zone right here so there's a lot of thunderstorms that are unorganized at this time this adds to the uncertainty of what the future could be for this entity this little tropical wave because there's going to be many centers many areas of thunderstorms in here that are going to be competing to be the dominant center first before these things can develop it needs to detach itself from that kind of elongated area of thunderstorm activity and again right now it is very unorganized so that is wave number one we're going to be watching that one has 20 percent shot for development once it kind of gets out in this area the one behind it i think has a better chance certainly it has the higher chance to develop as designated by the national hurricane center but this one is a beefy robust wave here getting ready to come off of africa and it will do so over the next couple of days again hanging about right there and as it does so though we'll also encounter some big time dust so as i say this i want to be clear here as we move forward that while the atlantic is showing signs of waking up it's not all there just yet there are still going to be big time limiting factors in play so i want to start things off by showing you the gfs model spin so what we're looking for is a big area of red and i'll circle them out for you when we get there and then uh, we'll get into the ensemble forecast as well. This is going to be base and wise. I'm going to point out a bunch of different things as we go. So there is August 14th. And here is kind of our elongated area. There is our tropical wave. Again, the GFS anyway, focusing on that back part where we did see that cluster of thunderstorms. Note, though, over the next week or next four or five days, here's August 18th that there's really not much. You see it all stretched out here across the Atlantic. So the GFS is not very bullish on developing that first wave. Here is that secondary wave, though, that we took a look at. Certainly, the Cabo Verde Islands are going to have to watch out for this. Now, typically, we don't see things develop prior to getting to the Cabo Verde Islands, but it is extremely warm, the water temperature, in this part of the world. So we may be able to get a quick spin-up tropical system before it gets to the Cabo Verde Islands. So again, if you're watching from there, just keep that in mind. There's also a lot of dust. I'll show you that in just one second. So if these things try to go far north, it's going to have to do battle with a lot of dry, dusty air. Going forward in time, here's August 20th to the 21st. And I mentioned at the top of this video, and I'm going to get in more detail on this in just a little bit, but that sneaky golf system. There's going to be a tropical wave likely working towards the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas as we get towards the 18th, 19th realm. Look what the GFS does with it. There's a little ball of energy if you will and again we're looking for that red consolidated ball there indicating that we do have strengthening low level spin and some kind of organization with the wind field in the lower levels now the gfs does keep this kind of weak but the point i want to make with this one is the gulf of mexico is ridiculously hot it is record hot in spots so if 
in fact, we get something into the Gulf of Mexico, even if it seems like an innocuous tropical wave, those need to be watched super carefully. We're going to break down the environment of the Gulf uh, coming up in just a minute as well. So there's a lot to get to in this video. And again, taking you further out, a couple of extra waves come off. Now, there's nothing too concerning here. This one staying weak. This one a little more pronounced. There's, that again, that red consolidated ball right there. There's a beefy disturbance through the Caribbean, unorganized at this time, through the 24th. So the GFS, while it does try to develop that trailing wave that's over Africa right now, it's not very bullish on the other two entities that we're going to have our eyes on in this video. And that is likely because, again, the tropics still are decently unfavorable for development close to that main development region. Okay, so I want to be clear about that, so just keep that in mind. I want to show you the European model before I take you into the realm of ensemble forecasting. And you want to stick around for that because that's really going to tell the story. I'll show you both the GFS and the European ensembles. So we're going to start with the European model right now. Big Bermuda height chilling right there in the central part of the Atlantic as typical. So here is number one, wave number one, that is southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. Now taking you further out in time. The European, a little more aggressive, kind of splits it and then takes it towards Trinidad and Tobago, towards the Windward Islands. There is that other wave that we took a look at that's over Africa. So it's certainly a little more aggressive getting it out into the Atlantic as well. And I want to point out that the European has been the more aggressive model so far this season, and it really has not come into fruition today, thankfully. Here is that tropical wave that I mentioned. There's August 19th coming through the Bahamas. So you see that little yellow there. So we do have a little bit of low-level spin. Not a ton. This wouldn't be tropical in nature as it kind of moves towards South Florida. But then, as you see, I need to move my head out of the way. Let me take this full to kind of show you what the European does. This still isn't that strong, although the model is certainly stronger than the GFS towards a North Gulf coast. The wind field would suggest we still have an open wave at this time. Nonetheless, something to watch because of the ridiculously warm water temperature in the Gulf of Mexico. And I'm going to show you some of that environment in just one second. There is the Saharan dust across the Atlantic. It is still prolific. It got a late start. I talk about this a lot. It's one of the main reasons why we had Brett and Cindy so early in the season. And in that weird spot also didn't help that the water temperature was again record warm, but there's going to be a lot of dry, dusty air for both that wave that's chilling right there southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands to develop, and then also a lot of dust for that wave that's getting ready to roll off of Africa right now. Tropical systems do not like that dry air that would be ingested right to the middle part of that system. With that said, I want to show you the ensembles now. The ensembles, it's a, think of like a band ensemble. It's made up of many members. This is the European ensemble. There are 51 members of this band in here. There's different initial conditions put into the model so that given in the time of extreme uncertainty where these things are just getting started, we don't have a low-level center just yet, so there's really nothing for a computer model to kind of hone in on. We look at the ensembles, and let me bring this full again, and I'm going to show you again on the on the actual map here what we're kind of looking at notice how we have a lot of stuff going on so the european ensembles are even aggressive at developing that trailing wave so certainly this would suggest again we need to be on guard in the caribbean and watching this a lot of lines here representing the second feature that we have and then there's also going to be let me update this plot so i can zoom it in for you this is the gulf of mexico there are also a lot of lines in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, I want to be clear that these aren't all storms here. This is kind of each member of the ensemble's idea, if you will, on what is to become of that storm. So there's certainly a decent amount of ensemble members on board with this Gulf of Mexico system as it kind of works towards either Louisiana or Texas. Now, to, again, to be clear, not no one of these models get this super, super strong, but... I wouldn't put a lot of trust in these ensembles one way or another just because it's way far out there and the Gulf of Mexico is going to be borderline prime for development once we get out to the 23rd, 24th realm into the upcoming weekend. Now the GFS ensembles are going to be a little bit different here. That trailing wave is pretty much, non uh, the leading wave I should say, is pretty much non-existent, although the GFS does kind of plow 
that storm off of Africa right up through Cabo, the Cabo Verde Islands and then into all of that dry, dusty air. But it does develop it, so we may have at least one storm come out of this little, this little mini flurry of storms, if you will. I want to take you further into the Western Caribbean. Let me highlight that. These model plots, anyway, uh, uh, by the way, are from weathernerds.org. It's a great site if you like to nerd out and look at some of these tropical models. Now, that leading wave may end up down here towards the Central Caribbean, but it just, again, it struggles developing it, and it's likely because of all of that dry, dusty air. Let me bring that back and show you again where that is. You see it's kind of filled through the Lesser Antilles and filled through the Caribbean. So the Atlantic has some work to do. This is also a good time, if you're, again, finding this video helpful, to hit that thumbs up button. But stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you what's going on in the Pacific, at least with one storm, and I'm going to show you why there could be reason to be skepticism from this model flurry of these storms. So again, stick around to the end of that. I want to bring you back to the model guidance into the Gulf of Mexico, or I should say the ensemble guidance, and note how there are are a few lines here on the GFS scenario, but not as many. So again, it, it piques our interest because we do have ensemble support on both models, and there likely is going to be a tropical wave coming out of the Bahamas and getting into the Gulf of Mexico. So again, antennas up. We're going to watch that one. There's nothing to freak out about, though. Be careful what you see on social media because this is exactly the reason or exactly the scenario where a few models could explode some storms in the Gulf over the next few days. But again, take it with a grain of salt. We need to pay attention, but also be careful. Again, not sounding the alarm or anything just yet. So again, I want to be clear about that uh, going forward. So again, back to the dust. There is that. And the environment in the Gulf of Mexico is prime. So regardless of get with a storm or not, and we don't want a storm here. We don't want a storm anywhere. Out in the open Atlantic, fine. But certainly anywhere near your land right now, because of how incredibly hot, I want to show you, I'm going to kind of take the temperature here, satellite of some of the water temperature, especially in the central and eastern Gulf of Mexico. Record hot in some places. Look at that, 88 degrees, 90 near the Keys. That has been well documented on this channel, what it's doing to the coral as well. If we got a tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico, this would not be good. This thing would likely go gangbusters given the lack of wind shear. That's another thing to be said. If there's wind shear here, the storm is likely going to have a difficult time developing even with these water temperatures. There's 88, 87, a little cooler right off the coast, right off the coast of Texas, but leading into it, that would not be a good thing closer to Cuba. Again, we also have the extremely warm water temperature, upper 80s, even into the lower 90s as well. The one thing that is always something, especially when you look for storms to rapidly intensify, and again, there's nothing out there. I'm just, I'm showing you this, that this would be a bad time for a storm to get going, is the tropical cyclone heat potential. When you start to get that peach and red color showing up, that means not only do we have very warm water temperature at the surface, but this water is deep. One of the things that tropical systems do is bring up cooler waters from the ocean surface and if they're slow or from the deep down below the ocean surface and if these storms are slow moving sometimes they can choke themselves out well where you see these kind of peachy colors and i'll point them out here certainly near the bahamas around cuba really anywhere that we get to this moderate to high category and that's where we start to look at that peach color that red color showing up that is where we have not only warm water at the surface but warm deep water so if that storm is moving through it's really not going to be able to choke itself out because it's just going to be pulling up really really hot water for it to feed off of i know i told you this was a long video and i've got more to come really cool satellite images coming out of the pacific on a rapid intensification i want to show you that so if you're interested stick around it's not going to hit land but it's a really pretty satellite presentation and i can say that because again it's not going to impact land i would never say such a thing if something was going to impact land but just eye candy from a satellite perspective this is not this is the wind shear plot and where you see the darker blue here let me take this full to get my big head out of the way wrong one 
Notice where we have the darker blue. That's indicating where we have negative shear. Bad wind shear for storms. That's over land, of course. But notice the light nature of the shear. This is one thing here of the El Nino that hasn't really shown up in the Atlantic is that strong wind shear just yet. We have some pretty nasty shear for storms in the Central and Western Caribbean, closer to Central America and South America. But note in the Gulf of Mexico, there's really nothing showing up here. That's not good news if we were to get something in there. So there's the upcoming Wednesday. There's a little bit, a little cold front trying to come down. So that would increase some shear. But then it kind of goes away. So we have shear towards the Bay of Campeche. And then nothing out in here. So if by that time we did have something towards the upcoming weekend, get towards the eastern or central or north Gulf Coast, it would likely be able to breathe unimpeded by little to no wind shear. So that is why we do not want anything. And we're going to keep a very very close eye on that situation further off in the western caribbean there's a little weird feature that i want to point out before we get to the pacific side it's this little spin this upper level low that's kind of here this could get out towards the central pacific and you see that's been kind of a cool feature here it's helping to ignite some storms uh toward panama toward costa rica that's going to move out towards the central uh, out towards the eastern pacific and that could help to spark something um once it gets there that basin is going gangbusters right now and i'll show you in a second but typically when you do have the pacific going nuts the atlantic is quiet because you have rising air over the pacific and then air tends to sink over the atlantic that is why we've had this very nice and lovely quiet stretch in the atlantic all right i keep on saying i'm gonna get to that pacific satellite but one more thing i think there's one more thing it's like but wait there's more Here's where we stand, and I always like to show this because I know I get a lot of comments on, okay, well, the Hurricane Center upgraded their forecast, and they did increase their forecast. I will link to that forecast for you in the description, in the comment section, if you are interested in seeing that. But in terms of where we stand, we're kind of just getting started. August 15th really starts the mean season, as it's known. At least our chief meteorologist, Tom Soros, calls it that. And for good reason, most of this ramp up of tropical activity comes as we get towards the middle of August and then through September and then before coming down as we get into the first part of October. So we are in the thick of it. We are in the peak of hurricane season, and that is always why we have to watch where that yellow line, we have this to go before we get to the peak, climatologically speaking, on September 10th before we start to see a sharp decrease into October and then another little flare up here, and this is likely... This is because we get cold fronts to come off of uh, the United States mainland, and then we get those storms to develop that way as well. All right, as promised, just want to show you this satellite loop here. Uh, we had another storm rapidly intensify in the eastern Pacific. We had Dora just last week, and it did some crazy things. If you want to see what Dora did, it became only the second storm on record to go through three basins as a hurricane, the eastern Pacific, the central Pacific, and western Pacific. And if you're familiar with your basins, that means that Dora became a typhoon, which is really weird. Hurricanes and typhoons are the same thing. They're just known as different things worldwide. They're all tropical cyclones, all under that umbrella. But it did a really rare feat, becoming only the second storm to do that, stay a hurricane from the east, central, and west. There are a list of other storms that became typhoons crossing from the central Pacific to the western Pacific, but still a uh, very rare feat. I'll post about that in the comments, but just look at this. Over the last couple of days, really over the last 24 hours or so, you see Fernanda go from just a weak tropical system and then look at the flare of thunderstorms. And then just watch what happens here. Quickly gets an eye. And then you see that mean. Look at all the brighter reds and purples there. Certainly that pinhole eye. And when you see that big flare up of that rust color or that red color. That means that we have very cold cloud tops. That's the infrared satellite seeing that. Uh, and the colder the cloud tops, the more intense the thunderstorm activity around there. And you can clearly see here just that purple those burst of thunderstorms around the center and then eventually it found what it liked and it went gangbusters thankfully again that one's not going to hit land but look at that a monster category four storm another one after dora which was also a monster category four storm that moved again south of hawaii and kept going became a typhoon anyway 
that one's not going to hit land. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Any questions or comments, post those in the comment section below. Again, post where you're tuning in from. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you do want to stay updated on all things hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. If you hit that little alert bell, you'll be notified anytime we post new content. And we will catch you next time. Thanks so much for watching, guys. This was a long one. Thank you for sticking around.